What's up everybody? Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Thanks for pressing play. Today we are going to take the C8 Corvette and we're going to add some protection to it. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Justin, isn't it already protected with Expel? Yes, it is. But what this is going to do is help protect it from road debris and rocks. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so believe it or not, there is a C7ZR1 under here. And underneath here is something that is also fully protected with Expel and with the same things we're going to add to the C8 Corvette today. And of course, I am talking about some sort of rock guards or some people might want to call them mud flaps or rock protection or whatever you want to call these things. They basically stick out a little bit from the wheel well to help protect from rocks blasting the side of your car. Now, obviously my C8 Corvette is fully protected with Expel, which is also a form of protection against rocks and scratches and everyday life. But what these things are going to do is take that one step further. Now, before we get too much into it on the C8 Corvette, I wanna show you guys, for any of you who haven't seen or are new to the channel, what they look like on the ZR1. So if we pull up the cover here a little bit and take a gander underneath. Now, these things really help protect rocks from getting just blasted to the rear of the car, but I actually think they also look pretty good. I'm always down with the idea of adding protection to these cars, especially since, you know, th these things are not cheap. The ones I'm getting here are, of course, painted carbon flash to match all the carbon flash accents on the car from factory. And we obviously have them for the front and the rear. So, like I said, this is about as much as you're gonna see sticking out from the side of the car. And that's gonna help down the angle here, especially with the wider black diamond wheels. It's gonna prevent rocks from slinging up at the rear. And then of course the ones in the rear are gonna stop from slinging up at the people behind me. So we're gonna get into this install. If you guys have seen these installed on the C7 Corvette before, you're gonna know the install is pretty easy, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because it is a new Corvette and this is kind of a new part. So let's get into it. But before we do, if you guys could please go ahead, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel. It helps circulate this video around YouTube and it makes sure that people such as yourselves don't miss future content. So please smash that thumbs up. Let me know you're enjoying the content. All right, so a little bit of a closer look at these things, guys. We obviously have one bolt hole here at the bottom that is likely to be a seven millimeter screw holding it up underneath the car. The rear ones actually have five metal clips that are gonna hold this thing to the body of the car. So yes, that's it. Five clips and one seven millimeter bolt. Now the front ones, are this basically the same one seven millimeter bolt but they have four metal clips holding them on instead of the fives nothing earth shattering nothing that's going to require any kind of doctorate degree here today but at the same time i do want to show these things off because i think they're going to look awesome and they're definitely going to be functional and here we go guys this is going to be the rear driver's side wheel and wheel well so we're going to start here so basically what we're looking to do today is remove this this is the factory splash guard so as you can see it is perfectly flush with the outside of the car and that's where Extreme Online Store looks to change things. So instead of just ending right at the body, it is gonna extend out about an inch and a half to about right here. So let's go ahead and get this one removed. Like I said, there is a seven millimeter bolt up underneath here, and then the rest is just clips. We'll just pull them off. If we go up underneath, you should be able to see the seven millimeter screw right there. Now with the seven millimeter bolt out, the next step would be to kind of pry this away from the body. I have a trim pry tool to go ahead and help me with that. You don't necessarily need this. You could probably use your fingers to get back behind there if you wanna have kind of sore fingers later. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, grab something like this or something that's a non-marring style pry tool and it will allow you to get in there without damaging anything. and just like that. So we've got all the clips out and the screw off the bottom, and that's what the stock one is gonna look like. So if we compare this to the actual extended rock guard, you could see right there what the difference is gonna be here. That's the stock one, this is the extended one. So this extra inch to an inch and a half at the bottom is going to be additional sticking out from where the stock one was just flush with the car. So let's go ahead and get this one installed. Like I said, it's gonna be basically the same as disassembly only backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and snap these into place and then put the seven millimeter screw there. Now, one last thing you are gonna to wanna to note is the little tab here. So if you're going to install it like this, that little tab will actually slide into a spot right there on the carpeted fender well. So you wanna slide that into place and then snap in the clips in the back. So as you can see in here, it's kind of tough to see, but 
that is slid into the little slot in the carpet. So I'm ready to go ahead and start pushing down the actual clips here. And the EOS ones fit a little bit tighter than the stock ones. So the clips that are in here are really kind of tough to push in. Ideally, I guess you'd want to remove the rear wheel for me, I found something I could wedge in between here and kind of use the tire to push them in. But without the wheel on there, you'd be able to punch those in no problem. With it on there, there's not really a lot of room to get in there to really put any kind of pressure in getting those clips pushed in. But as you can see here, there is no gap. We're gonna go ahead and put the bolt in. And then I'm gonna move up to the front one here and show you the same process, because it is a little bit different. And we're up here at the front wheel. So we're gonna remove the factory splash guard, put in the aftermarket EOS ones that offer that little extra protection. This is especially important in the front where it can kick all the rocks up right back there at the side scoop and all the rear fender, the wheels, the side skirts. This is where you want the most protection here in the front. And that's exactly what we're gonna get. So same thing here, there's a seven millimeter bolt up underneath here and there's gonna be clips on the front ones here to get off. And right up under here, that is the seven millimeter screw we're talking about. I'll go ahead and get that off and then we can start into the installation. And then of course, just like in the rear, we're gonna go ahead and insert a pry tool here and just start pulling away from the body of the car. As you can see here, every single one of those clips stayed in the car instead of coming off with the actual splash guard. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult. We're gonna have to bust out a pair of pliers to get those out. But what you guys do wanna notice is with the front ones, there is two tabs. So just like the rear one, we do have a tab that has to slide into the actual fender well first, right there. And then there's another one down here at the bottom. Both those tabs will have to slide in there first before you start putting in the clips. And then ultimately the seven millimeter bolt here. A pair of needle nose pliers will allow you to grab these clips and just kind of pull them out those will just go right back on the stock splash guard and the work smarter not harder thing came into mind when i realized yeah we can actually turn the front wheels and make this a little bit easier on ourselves so i went ahead and turned the wheel to the left just to open up as much space as i possibly could in here for us to get in with these clips so let's get to it And that's it for the front one here, guys. That one went on a lot easier because I was able to just kind of punch the clips in. The rear ones are a little bit more difficult because you can't turn the wheel like this. So unless you want to remove the wheel completely, the rear ones are going to be a little bit more difficult. Don't get me wrong. It's not something that's going to take you all day. But at the same time, the front ones are much easier with the ability to go ahead and turn that wheel. All right, guys. So here's what we have so far. Yeah. Check that out. I really like the look of that, especially right up against the carbon flash side skirt. It's gonna help definitely protect some in the back here. And then of course we have the back one on as well that will help protect the people behind me. And of course, a little bit of the rear painted bumper you can see here. But if you're looking down the side of the car, you can definitely see them sticking out a little bit. They definitely help accessorize the car. They've helped pull in all the carbon flash paint. I like it and it is functional. You guys know how I feel about that. If it's functional and it looks awesome, I am always down for it. But what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna show you the passenger side in a little bit more detail because I realized, you know, the whole wheel turning thing, we can see in there a lot better. Better. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the stock passenger side piece and then go ahead and show you putting on the new aftermarket piece in better detail since we can see in there a lot better. So first thing is going to be removing the seven millimeter screw that is right there. And it looks like none of the clips are coming this time either. So definitely interesting. So for the most part, grabbing and pulling it is all you really need to do, but these clips do not want to come with it for some reason. We got one of them. So the rest are gonna have to be pulled out again with the needle nose pliers. I can just come in here, grab these things and kind of work them out. Put those back on the stock pieces. Now the new one, as you can see here, has the tab on the bottom and the top. That will fit right in there and right up on the top one right up here. So you can slide them into place and then that's pretty much it. You can punch in the clips from here. You just wanna make sure that they are lined up with the holes here so you're not breaking them and instead they are going into the actual holes where the clips seat. So with the two tabs slid into the actual wheel well, the top and the bottom, we can go ahead, make sure these are lined up, push them in a little bit, and then just kind of punch them in from here.
just like that. So that is the passenger side one done as well. I will go ahead and put the seven millimeter bolt in the bottom and then we are good to go. I am gonna also show you the passenger side rear as well because I think I didn't get enough detail on the installation back there on the first one. So I'm gonna finish this one up and then I'll see you back there. We're on the passenger side rear here. I already had the seven millimeter bolt out. We're gonna go ahead and start prying away the stock splash guard. I would recommend either taking the wheel off or jacking the car up a little bit to give you a little bit more room in the wheel well if you need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pry this away. I'm gonna kind of show you exactly what you need to do and then we'll get the new one on there. And I'll show you what I meant by the rear one on the other side being a little bit tight. So just like with the front ones, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and stick a trim pry tool remover in here. Just kind of work your way around until you can get those clips out. So the rear ones all stay on, but yeah, the front ones both came off for me. This is one of the reasons I think that the aftermarket EOS splash guards in the rear are a little harder to get on is because of this extra clip. So the stock ones only have four clips on the front and on the rear, but the EOS one puts an extra clip down here because there is a spot for the clip to go, which is odd that this one wouldn't have it, but I don't know. With that said, that's why this one is a little bit more difficult. This is kind of tough to get in and once you get it into place you can then bolt the entire thing in with the seven millimeter screw down here but until then it sits on there kind of loosely and you really have to smack it into place which is why i recommended removing the rear wheel if you can or if that makes sense for you because you really got to get some leverage in there to smack these things in so there isn't a lot of room back here but you should be able to see the slit right there that's where that little tab will slide into and you want to slide that in pretty much before anything else. So it is in place. And now I will start lining up all the metal clips. As you should be able to see here, they're all lined up. So now you gotta kind of get something you can have some leverage on to push those into place. So I can kind of get the first one started by hand and then just kind of work my way down. But as you can see, I'm starting to run into some tension. Everything's lined up. It's just, you gotta, you gotta just really push or get some tension on something that you can pry against the tire to push in. And for me, that is the end of a broom handle. So if you kind of look where the clips are at, you can take that broom handle just like this and push against the tire and it will also pop in that clip. So you'll just do that all the way down. Now, if you have a pry bar or something like that, it might be a little bit better idea to use, but for me, this worked and it will work for you as well. So as you can see, those are all fit it in there real nice and tight against the body of the car. Now I'll go ahead and put the seven millimeter bolt in and we are done. All right, guys, that is it. So if you look at the back here, fully protected and even up to the front, we are fully protected. I wanna give EOS a big, 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 big thumbs up. They make an awesome product. They reached out to me, they sponsored this video. These things are absolutely awesome. Now, like I've said before in previous videos, guys, if I get sent a product that is really just not up to par, I will test it out, I'll put it on the car, and if I don't like it, you will never see a video of it. So even though these things were sent to me for free and the video was sponsored by EOS, you would not see this video if these things were not something that I would personally recommend. And because I do like the way they fit, I do like the protection that they offer, I will be linking them in the description down below and you will see this video. But anyway, guys, if you liked what you saw, please give me a big thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm gonna have loads of C8 Corvette C5 Corvette, C7 Corvette, C6 Corvette, all the Corvette stuff. It's coming to the channel. You're not going to want to miss it. This thing is going to be huge. So make sure you're tuning in for the C5 stuff as well. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next upload.